ating ikatatlong tagapagsalita ay Professor Five at Program Coordinator ng BA Philippine Arts sa programang Cultural Heritage and Arts Management ng UP Manila. Siya ay nagtapos ng BA Humanities, Pre-Med, at Doctorate sa Philippine Studies sa UP Liman. Siya ay isang UP Centennial at one UP Professor, Professorial Chair Awardee, at regular na miyembro ng UP Research Ethics Board. Kamakailan ay ginawaran siya bilang university artist sa pagkilala ng kanyang mahalagang ambag sa malikhaing pagkasaliksik, paglalathala, at pagkataguyod ng cultural heritage. Siya ay nangungkulan din bilang direktor ng Office of Student Affairs, UP Manila, mula 2011 hanggang 2014. Kasama sa kanyang interes sa pananaliksik, ang sining ng timog silangang asya, antropolohiya ng sining, at medical anthropology. Ang mga paksang ito rin ang naging sentro ng kanyang mga naisulat na ipresenta sa lokal at international na konferensya at na ilathala bilang journal article o kabanata ng libro. Ang kanyang pinakabagong publikasyon ay kabanata sa Aklat na Scopus Index na may titulong Religious Tourism in Asia, Tradition and Change Through Case Studies. Na ilathala din sa Calle Paura Journal ang kanyang artikulong Calle Paura Cultural Heritage Amidst Conflict in Ermita, Manila. At isa pang artikulo na lumabas naman sa Philippine Journal of Health Research and Development noong 2018 na pinamagatang The Ibaloy of Benguet as Active Agents in Health Negotiations. Matapos ang Marawi Siege, pinangunahan at pinasinayaan niya noong 2017 ang konferensyang may titulong The Lost and Retreat Cultural Heritage Amidst Conflict. Sa kasalukuyan, siya ang direktor ng taunang Flores de Mayo Festivals and Conferences ng Paura Project na ipinapagdiwang sa buwan ng Mayo. Malugod ko pong pinapakilala sa inyo ang ating katatlong tagapagsalita na magtatalakay ng paksang Proclaiming the Unsung, the Paura Project and Heritage Advocacy in Ermita, si Dr. Hani Libertine at Shansar Labor. Okay, uh... Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, nagpapasalamat po ako sa UP Manila Queen Centennial Commemoration Committee sa pag sa akin na ibahagi ang The Fara Project. So let me just uh, share my screen. Ay, can I? Yan, okay, I'll just share my screen. I do this. Just do this. Yeah. Okay, the Fabra Project and Heritage Advocacy in Anita. Okay, so, uh, the presence of a landmark that represents Anita in the 1598 map of Peter Van der Kier's Insula Filipine indicates the importance given to the site where the image of the Nuestra Senora de Guia was found in 1571. So with the construction of a shrine in the area, sorry, uh, of what eventually was to be known by its name, La Ermita, it became the residence of a community which continuously grew in number and which in turn demanded a continuous development that only ceased after the destruction of Manila at the end of Second World War. So the relevance of the area where the University of the Philippines Manila lie is the very subject of uh, the advocacy of the FAURA project, an organization of alumni, faculty, current students, and friends of UP Manila that is bound by a common cause, which is to revive, revitalize, and sustain the rich cultural and historical heritage of Ermita particularly along Faura Street and its environs. I shall be presenting to you today some maps which trace the continuous importance of Ermita through time and also space since we know that the, that the geographical terrain of Ermita has changed due to continuous reclamation of land. So these maps are most relevant to the prehistory of the Faura project as the latter started with the regular conduct of heritage trails inspired by maps old and new. The said trails had a number of versions as these targeted particular audiences, 
each one meant to highlight historical and cultural heritage that can be most appreciated by different age groups and academic background. An offshoot of these heritage trails are the annual Flores de Mayo festivals, which started in 2018, now, so week-long celebration of heritage, both tangible and intangible, along the street which it, cha which it champions. So the first slides I will be showing you uh, will come from this book. No? It's a 300 years of Philippine maps published by the Metropolitan Museum of Manila for an exhibit which showcased maps published from 1598 to 1898, no? which makes 300 years. So, so this is the Petrus Kerus, 1598 Insula Filipina map published in Amsterdam. So this small map is historic for being the first map of the Philippines already within its, its established historical borders. What may be more relevant, though, in my presentation is the presence of two forts. Um, let me, yes, if you see my arrow, yeah, fort one, fort two, yes. No? Um, and right between this is a marker in the form of a cross. There. Uh, so this marker is slightly nearer to the fort on the right. Now, we said that Petrus Kiris map is dated 1598. So by that year, we know that there were indeed two forts in the area. So Fort Santiago, which became the main port of the spice trade with the Americas and Europe for three centuries, and Fort San Abad, built in 1584. And we know that also uh, before the publication of that map, the Nuestra Señora de Guía, the image, no, was also found no, in, um, according to the late 17th century manuscript, Anales Apechasticos de Filipinas, the image was found after the taking of Manila from Raja Sulaiman. No? After a hard and bloody battle, Legazpi entered the magnificent city of Manila with its 4,000 beautiful houses on May 19, 1571. So a soldier walking along the shore of Manila Bay found the image of the Nessa Senora de Guia among the center foliage of a pandan tree. So this was indeed possible since the land fronting it was not yet reclaimed. No? So according to local lore, the natives built a quaint wooden temple for the image where it was transferred a little beyond the place where it was originally found. So historians trying to establish the origin of this image have come up with the theory that it was brought to the Philippines together with the Santo Nino de Cebu by Ferdinand Magellan in 1521 and was given to the rulers of Manila as a present by the rulers of Cebu. Uh, Dr. Gamagay also said earlier that Fray Juan de la Concepcion in his work Historia General, General de Filipinas suspects that the image came from India which had been visited by the Apostle Thomas. And in an article of Ambet Ocampo, um, in Philippine Inquirer in 2014, he recounts that a Portuguese, Portuguese historian in the 1970s informed his Filipino colleagues that the Ermita image in Manila resembles another Nuestra Señora de Guía in a church also called La Ermita overlooking Macau. And that the title Nuestra Señora de Guía is not Spanish but Portuguese in origin. <laughs> so Ocampo added that was an image in fact brought to the to Manila by Portuguese missionaries before Legazpi arrived in 1571. It has also been proposed by other historians that the image carved from Molave with distinct orient oriental rather than western features was made by pre-Spanish Filipinos or perhaps a Chinese artisan who venerated it as an idol, a lika, or perhaps a duwata. In a paper I presented in the opening program of the third Flores de Mayo Festival with a the theme celebrating 500 years of heritage with local flora. Just like last week, I said that aside from the fact that this image predates the arrival of Legazpi in 1571, the place of the Nuestra Señora de Guía in the Quincentenary is confirmed by the narratives of local flora that surrounds it. First, the Vitex Parvi Flora or the Molave tree, um, which the image is made of, no, is endemic to the region of Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Secondly, the Pandanus amarifolius, commonly known as pandan, likewise is a plant that is grown widely throughout Southeast Asia. 
due to the limitation of time in that conference, I did get to say, uh, to state it, uh, that the face and hands of the sculpture of the image is made out of Nara, ter Terocarpus indicus, no? a species of Terocarpus, which is native to the Philippines. It was also declared the national tree of the Philippines in 1934 through proclamation number 652. It is certain then that the medium of the sculpted image of the Mesa Senora de Guia is of Asian origin and that it predates 450 years. The Francois uh, Valentin Dodrex 1724 map of the Stad Manila or the city of Manila show more clearly the site of the shrine of Ermita between Fort Santiago and Fort Abad. So this is, okay, this is uh, the shrine. The Duque de Almo de Guevara 1787 plan de Manila, Subaya y Puerto de Cavite is, on the other hand, the earliest map in the exhibit which shows the word Ermita actually printed. Uh, there you go. <laughs> in the 1898 plan of the Manila, uh, okay. Uh, Plano de Manila is Arabales. We see here the Observatorio and the Escuela de Agricultura, where the University of the Philippines will stand a decade after. 1929 map of the city of Manila. We see here the university campus. We see that the de continuous development of Ermita only ceased after the destruction of Manila at the end of World War of the Second World War. Practically everything was at a standstill then, except for PGH, which continued to address the needs of the sick and the wounded, as well as UP Manila, which still managed to conduct classes in makeshift classrooms. After the war, Ermita slowly resurfaced, but this time as a commercial center. Up until now, with the increasing number of high-rise towers for more commercial establishments and offices, as well as condominiums for the growing number of people who either study or work in the area. Another mark of the modern is the application of constructive reuse on heritage buildings. Of course, the presence of the constituent unit of the University of the Philippines and the Philippine General Hospital with the National Institute of Health largely contributed as well to its relevance. For these reasons, this part of Ermita remained always accessible to public transportation. Padre Fauda Street can be reached via light rail transits, buses, jeepneys, of course, taxis, FX, electric tricycles, and even pedicabs. So public vehicles run through as well in front and behind the shrine of the Mesa Senora de Guia. So Ermita Church continued to remain then, or to remain accessible to the public, and factored in to maintain its importance. It remains to be a frequent part of Visita Iglesia routes during Holy Week. The Nessa Senora de Guia continually is bestowed, bestowed then with new garments. Many of these can be seen uh, displayed inside the Camarin at the end or at the back of the shrine. And just last month, um, she was given a new set of clothing designed by no less than Barge Ramos a fashion designer known for his many iterations, iterations of the Barong Tagalog. For the Nuestra Senora de Guia's garment, he used piña cloth and embroidered it with ilang-ilang blossoms and pandan leaves. You also see cut bead crystals on the garment. So the relevance of place of both the University of the Philippines Manila and its environs, Ermita, is the very subject of the advocacy of the FAURA project as it seeks to revive, revitalize, and sustain the rich cultural and historical heritage of Ermita, particularly along pa um, Padre Faura Street you know, and its environs. Besides its historical and geographical significance, Ermita has managed to maintain a rich cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible. A few of these are indeed visible and well manifest and just have to be promoted some are latent and in need of revival through research. Others basically just need to be sustained through conservation. 
the Faura project gets to address all three objectives. But I uh, and I have shown you earlier how impor the importance of place can be feed to the study of maps and their analysis. I will be presenting next just two more projects or undertakings due to the limitation of time. So just the, um, I'll, I'm referring to the uh, Flores de Mayo festivals and the heritage trails. So first the maps and heritage trails. No? So the maps presented earlier are testaments to the importance of Enmita's place. They are indeed tangible proof of heritage of Enmita as they trace its continuous significance through time and also geographical space. So these maps too, though, are what inspired the initial offerings of the Faura project. The Cali Faura Heritage Trails, Heritage Trails, no? scripts of varied pathways in the Ermita area that showcase different itineraries and narratives. The first was just the basic trail that traced key heritage sites along Padre Faura Street no? from Paco Park and Cemetery to Manila Bay, just a straight, uh, just along the street itself. No? So with Manila Bay at the other end. So the Paco Park and Cemetery was uh, opened to the public in 1822 as a burial ground for victims of the Asiatic cholera pandemic in 1817 and to 1824. The Paco Park and Cemetery became resting place of the Spanish Hive Society in the late 1800s. Here too was um, our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, was interred after his execution in Bagumbayan. And it was the final resting place of the three Filipino martyrs and priests, Jose Burgos, Mario, Mario Gomez, and Jacinto Zamora. Okay. So on the right is the rest is the Gomburza Monument. At the other end of the street is Manila Bay. And between the two are the campus uh, are the campus of the University of the Philippines, Manila, with its heritage buildings, and the platform for one of the Ateneo Bells, which stands at the site of the former Faura Observatory. That's where Robinson's Ermita now stands. So you would see that at the entrance of Robinson's Ermita. Another trail was a short linear chronology of Philippine history. From Manila Bay, with a discussion of pre-Hispanic terrain of Ermita, marked by a web of esteros to the shrine of the Nuestra Señora de Guía. This is the Nuestra Señora de Guía, which marked the beginning of the Span Spanish contact with the Philippines, or in Manila, at least in the Ermita area, to the site of the former observatory. So you walk from, where's my arrow? Oh, there. <laughs> so you walk from the observatory, to, uh, from the shrine to the observatorio. So, which marks the last decades of Spanish rule to the UP grounds, huh? uh, formerly the Escuela de Agricultura. Uh, so, the UP grounds, which stands testament to the promotion of public health as well as a public and secular university system. So, the itinerary ends with the UP Manila Museum of the History of Ideas, the former UP infirmary turned College of Dentistry, subjected to constructive reuse and turned into a contemporary museum in terms of content and form. Beside it, of course, are the high-rise malls and condominiums, pointing as well to the modern Philippine era. So it was actually a, tra a, a trail no, which started with the pre-Hispanic to the modern. So heritage trail scripts have also been prepared for particular groups, for children and for older groups, no, high school and college students and also for local and foreign tourists. These are initially conducted by the members of the Fauda project who have had experience in museum work. UP students were later trained to conduct this. Collaboration were also carried out with UP Manila professors. Street productions have also been carried out. There was a day wherein one would see Padre Federico Fauda walking along the street that was named after him and an amazing race production took place from Paco Park to the PGH grounds with the UP Oblation as the ultimate pit stop. Since most of the flora or since most of the flora or symposia are not accessible to passersby, 
we thought of organizing once a forum on heritage conservation in a venue that provided direct access from the street, even for anyone just passing by. So we had one at the Girl Scout Auditorium along Padre Fowler Street in 2014. So two speakers were invited for the half-day event. One from the National Museum who spoke on heritage conservation. The other, uh, the other one was Dr. Rafael Bondo who spoke of uh, heritage buildings in UP Manila. And among the participants in the said forum was the former vice mayor of Manila, Isco Moreno. You see him here? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, who was our guest of honor and who vouched to make heritage conservation part of his continuing advocacy. I think it was providential that he had to attend our forum in behalf of the city mayor at the time. Despite the variety of heritage trails that have been concept conceptualized and conducted along the street, study and analysis of maps and their application continue. Processions during May festivals uh, during May festivals organized by Anita Church are, are being tracked for the purpose of similar street gatherings, partly to study traffic flow, partly to monitor community participation. Maps indicating flood hazards are also monitored. And this makes the scheduling of our flagship project, the Flores de Mayo festivals on the month of May, most ideal, as this is not flood prone. With the map provided by the Intramuros administration for their suggested tour routes, the Fowler project responds with a map of a suggested heritage trail that links the Intramuros route to the Padre Fowler Street. And since heritage trails are no easily are no longer easily accessed or are not easily accessed in this time of pandemic, we are developing heritage trails that can be accessed online. Um, if, uh, if it press uh, Hispanic, we're supposed to see how Padre Fowler looked like during the time. If you press American and contemporary, let us just go down. Yes. So this is what would I don't see my I don't see my arrow right there. So this is what you would see if you press uh, Hispanic. Huh? So those uh, structures which were built during the, those times. And then American period, this is what you can see, some of the structures built during those times, and of course, the contemporary. So this website, um, actually it's online already, but it's still being developed or improved. And since shared experience is a great learning tool, engagements with advocates of heritage streets is part of the FAURA project's advocacy among the heritage streets that have been featured in the Fowler Project's Heritage Street webinar series are Calle Colon Cebu with Mr. Bino Guerrero, Calle Crisologo in Vigan with Mr. Bernard Guerrero, and a rice terrace in Mayoyao Ifugao, also as a heritage street, no? the terrace as heritage street, with Miss Joanna Santiago. So these uh, two webinars were done um, in collaboration with the BA Philippine Arts, Cultural Heritage and Arts Management Program. So, um, since, uh, so since um, despite the fact that we had the public as our audience, the, our, the, the primary or the targeted audience were uh, students no, in the program. Yes, yeah, the Catholic Sologo. Okay, and um, just uh, during the week of our festival, we launched the one-minute documentary of Memories of Calle Faura. I'll just play it here since it's just for one minute. So actually what I remember about Holy Week, which I don't see, actually I don't really see it anymore, was that there were times at uh, Padre Faura when we would go to church on our way to the church, we would sometimes see some flagellants, either solo or they go by twos, and they're um, barefoot, naked from the waist up, and they 
uh, whip themselves with you know, strings with broken glass at the end. It's their their penitence actually. So then they were wearing some sort of like a crown of thorns or something on the head. But uh, I haven't seen any this past few years. But in the past, there would eventually one, one or two, but you'll see them walking. Yes, when we, um, when, we get, when we got back to Miss Peach, we asked her exactly when she experienced this, and, uh, it, and she said that it was during her high school uh, days no, that she got to witness no, the, the occurrence of this flagellance along the street. No? It's very interesting. Um, okay. So if you, if you would like to see that again, just check it in the Fowler Project Facebook page. It can be accessed through that page. Okay, so this brings us now to the second part of my presentation, the second and the last part of my presentation. And this has to do with the change in the UP's academic calendar. You know? And one not entirely academic activity, you know? the Lantern Parade. So in the old calendar, we see this situated as a year ender, a most joyous one as a, at that, no? uh, as Christmas indeed has a celebratory character. In the new academic calendar, this served as a SEM ender. Another change, though, in the new academic calendar is the inclusion of the month of May in a regular semester. So this inspired the FAURA project to schedule its annual week-long campaign for heritage on this month. As this can also preserve or also serve as a perfect SEM ender activity, this time tagged as the FAURA, as the Flores de Mayo Festival. A secular look or a take on a Filipino tradition, promoting local heritage with endemic locals, flora. Okay. So just like the Lantern Parade, the Flores de Mayo Festival has an interdisciplinary character. So all colleges and each of the constituent units of UP are involved in the Lantern Parade, each one incorporating the character of their own college in their lantern. The Flores de Mayo Festival, which first took place in 2018, have all also or always addressed interdisciplinary issues. The first Flores de Mayo Festival had as its theme endemic flowers in the Philippines. The highlight of the week was, was where first the procession of endemic flowers along Padre Faura Street and the UP Manila grounds, and second, a week long painting exhibit of endemic flowers at the UP Manila Museum of the History of Ideas. So the said exhibit featured the works of Ms. Bing Famoso, founder of the Philippine Botanical Arts Society, who, who also was an alumna of BA Philippine Arts, Cultural Heritage, and Art Management Program. Painting workshops on endemic flora or flowers were also carried, during the, carried out during the week. The second Flores de Mayo Festival in 2019 was an advocacy for Aroceros Park, the last lung of Manila. Awareness talks were organized to help campaign against the construction of edifices within the park and nooks. And nooks were provided for signature campaign against the building of a gym at the middle of the park. We were grateful to have joined this advocacy as the mayor of Manila eventually declared the park as Forest Park and any structure that would be built on it will be considered illegal. Talks. Uh, for the festival tokens during the festival. So the theme for the 2020 at Flores de Mayo Festival was supposed to be healthy parks, healthy people, inspired by a global movement that aims to harness the power of parks and public lands as a health resource. The promotion of all lands or all, all parks, urban and wild land, as cornerstone of people's physical mental and spiritual health, social well-being, and sustainability of the planet was its advocacy. This was the conclusion of the 2014 International Union of Conservation of Nature World Parks Congress, which took place in Sydney, Australia. Contact with nature is essential for human, emotional, physical, and spiritual health and well-being. So this was the context of the sad 
conference. And, in the, and indeed, all our campaign or all-out campaign for the said advocacy followed suit in Canada, in Europe, and in the United States, among others. And the Faura Project wanted to do its share by making its festival theme. Make it, making it its festival theme. But of course, the pandemic happened. Initial projects, though, were earlier carried out for this. The revitalization project of the Plaza de Nuestra Señora de Guía was launched. Uh, we see a uh, no walking mark there because, <laughs> yeah, because of the pandemic. So this was a collaboration with the Sangunian um, Kabataan Chairperson of District 5, Ermita, Ms. Marinel Completo, and other councillors of her district who vouched to help maintain whatever the project may contribute to the park. So the project has had a twofold aim. So the first was the greening of the park and the incorporation of pandan plant on the spot where the Nessa Senora de Guia was sited, standing on a trunk surrounded by pandan leaves. Because when we saw the park, there was uh, no sight of any pandan leaves. But although there was a flower bed no, where it could easily be, be planted. No? So uh, some students belonging to the Philippine, uh, Philippine Arts volunteered to took charge of gathering plants. The second aim was the use and promotion of the park as heritage or as venue for heritage promotion. This became the site then where the Faura Project School uh, Kulay Linang Books was first launched. Uh, volume two of that book um, with one side color for children. Uh, the Museum of Fine Arts, the Metropolitan Theater. Of course, the Philippine General Hospital, and on the right, the National Museum of Natural History, the Tree of Life. This uh, was in the park again no? uh, in 2020. So, to participate in the celebration of the Philippine Quincentenary, the third Flores de Mayo Festival. Uh, which took place the other week, had the theme of 500 years of heritage with local flora. The week of the festival was opened with a conference carrying the same theme. So after the inspirational talks from the College of Arts and Science Dean, Leonardo Estacio, and our UP Manila Chancellor, Dr. Carmencita Padilla, during the said conference, four papers were presented. And these papers reflected the interdisciplinary nature of the platform of the Flores de Mayo Festival. So I spoke of how the Flores de Mayo Festivals can be a platform for numerous heritage advocacies. Uh, I began by discussing why and how local flora has a place in the celebration of the quincentenary, and that in fact, endemic and local flora predates 500 years. Then I proceeded to discuss the place of Ermita in the quincentenary. Miss Bing Famoso spoke of the Philippine Botanical Art Society, which she founded, and its advocacy in promoting local flowers. Dr. Mercedes G. Planta from UP Diliman presented archival materials in her talk on ladies' choice, medicinal plants, flowers, and plants with extraordinary qualities for women in 16th and 17th century Philippines. And lastly, Mr. John Ray Calado, a botanist in the National Museum of Natural History, Discuss and compare botanical illustrations then and now. Diverse too were the participants as they come from the week-long uh, festival featured an online painting exhibit of local flora um, composed uh, by works of um, artists belonging to the Philippine Botanical Art Society. There were also painting workshops. There. Uh, this conducted online. There were around four spread out during the week. Uh, participants included uh, stu some students from UP Manila. Uh, being prof uh, Professor Bing Bonilla required her class to attend this workshop, one of this workshop. And another workshop was, uh, uh, st although still open to the public, uh, it had a targeted audience, and these were the children of Ermita. It's a collaborative project uh, with, the once again, the SK of Ermita. So this is part of uh, the Faura Project's uh, um, efforts towards community development uh, and community collaboration. 
Ah, there. So we see on the right, no, Miss Marinal Completo supervising the kids. Of course, the uh, most of the kids were online, but those who did not uh, have access to online, uh, he, he she allowed uh, I think just uh, around seven, seven or eight children. We only see seven on the on the uh, on the screen, no? and of course with proper social distancing and masks. No? <laughs> All of those were considered. And to even make um, make the the book further up, uh, or the the first edition no, of our uh, Likas Linang books uh, available to the project. Now this can this was also made accessible online. Now this can be downloadable from the Faura Project Facebook page to encourage people. Yes, uh, there were some activities uh, which could make them. Well, sorry, but this ended yesterday. You know? <laughs> um, to color a page and win a prize. So the closing program with the Flores de Mayo Festival was a live online Santa Cruzan using the Dress Up platform. No? So Dress UP or Dress Up is an event where participants grow show creativity in fashion through a photo and or video based on a chosen prompt no? as conceptualized by Ms. Charisse del Castillo. Before the presentation of participants in their and, uh, and their entries, a talk on the origins of the Santa Cruzan was given, which included art analysis of an illustration in, a, in an 825 AD manuscript. The illustration deals with the finding of True Cross of Christ by Queen Helen or Reina Elena and how she figured out which of the three crosses which were excavated in situ was the true one. So as stated by uh, Professor Celia Bonilla, in her interview over Radio Veritas on the first day of our recent third Flores de Mayo Festival, I quote uh, that in the upfront of commercialization and traditions, the presence of the cross validates the performance of the Santa Cruzan. Um, I'll just share. This is uh, if, uh, a short film. Where's my arrow? My arrow is not moving. I'm sorry. Uh, there, I'll, I'll just play a short, at least long, but I'll just play a short part of it, showing some of the, those who won. I'm sure you guys are excited to know who our <laughs> winners are going to be, so I will not let you guys wait. Okay, so our first runner-up for the prom, Reina Oharife, is, drumroll, <laughs> yes, Ronnie Bawa. So again, this is his photo and video. Uh, let's see his video. Great. Okay, thank you so much. And congrats again to Ronnie for winning first runner-up for the first prompt. So as I mentioned a while ago, you will be receiving prizes. Um, you will be receiving a mask and also tokens from NCCA. So I will be messaging you later on and ask for your address so you can send it over to you. Okay, so next, for our next winner. So our first runner-up for Reina Ohari Caridad is... Gently, yes. Yeah, so again, this is her photo and her video. Okay, so if you want to see our grand winner, uh, please check out the Faura Project YouTube page and you will see their Dress Up Santa Cruzan. So I wanted to show it, but there's a limitation of time. So we proceed. So the results, okay, the study. So we just saw how the objectives of the Faura Project to revive, revitalize and sustain heritage have all been addressed through its undertakings. 
in discussing just two of its projects, most of the projects were actually discussed in the process. So the attendance and the positive response of, uh, oh, sorry. Okay, a page was missing. It's all right. So the attendance and positive response of the participants in the third Flores de Mayo Festival and Conference, despite the pandemic, were, in, were indeed heartwarming. And we say yes to the UP Manila Chancellor's call to continue doing this annually. Ultimately, the aim of all these undertakings is valuation of place. That through these activities, an increase in pride of place be bestowed in every stakeholder of Calle Faura and Ermita as a whole. I use the term place as used in phenomenological architectural theory to mean space with memory and meaning, which may either be built and built or both. And I use the word stakeholder in a broad sense, since every Filipino has a stake in the importance of Calle Faura and Ermita as a whole, as this part of the archipelago is part of national patrimony. The diversity of our festival participants confirm, uh, confirm this as well. So the data presented show that although the face of the present day Ermita Manila has changed drastically from its colonial past and uh, the revival of traditions and festivities may in fact be the key for community integration and revitalization. Amidst the various historic turns and power shifts in Ermita Manila, the people in the community themselves holds the key to defining their culture and future. Each one of us who considers Calle Faura part of her life, whether as resident, student, worker, or even tourist, no, has agency. For we define our culture as much as culture gives meaning and relevance to our lives. So to this, the advocacy of the Faura Project lies. So magandang umaga po muli sa lahat at maraming salamat po. Tatapos na po yung aking presentasyon. I will just stop share. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Professor Anton Zarlabor, for taking us back and reconstructing to us through your presentation and advocacy efforts the colorful history of the street that everyone in 